So this is the first episode in an eight week series of my lead up to the New York Marathon. Um, so we'll be doing, you'll be seeing some workouts, some long runs, um, some nutrition, uh, and some strength. Um, so if you have any questions, let me know. Um, super happy to have Soar on board. You'll be seeing me wear Soar clothing, which is super high tech. It is a brand out of the UK. It's amazing. The people are awesome and I'm super excited to share it with you guys. Um, all right. So getting ready for, um, Cow Harbor, which is 10 K road national championships, uh, this weekend. So we have like a little pre-race. Um, so today we're doing a mile between 520 and 530, um, which is marathon pace. And then we'll be doing 10 400s, um, alternating between like a faster one and then more of like a half marathon slash marathon pace. Um, and then we'll bookend that with another marathon pace type mile. Um, and, and so, yeah, I'm coming off like a hard, um, long run this weekend, which went really well. So I'm excited about that and trying to do like a small taper for this 10 K I do want to run fast. Um, but obviously it's not the a goal. So, you know, I'll probably run, I'm at 115 miles per week. Now I'll probably bring that down to like 90. Um, so I can be a little bit more zippy, but, um, not totally, uh, well rested. So that's it. So I'm thinking, um, mile 530 ish. Yes. And yep. then we're going to do, we, I think we have 10, 400s alternating cruise fast. So float. Yeah. Float. So when you finish, do the first one slow, just keep running around the track. Oh, uh, okay. But, but it can, doesn't have to be exactly 82. Take a recovery. Normally what I do in the in and outs, you finish here on the slow one, I mean, finish the slow one, then you start the fast one here, then you jog, 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 slow, then slowly you start picking it up until you get here again. Oh, so those, that's a continuous thing. You want well, us to do... it's okay. kind of continuous, but you don't have to hit exactly 82. So 70. it's a two and a half mile in and out without stopping. What? So it's like 82, 74, 82, 72, 82, 70, right? Can you do that? No. It's like so two here's, sets of each. Of look, here's, here's what, look, I'm gonna, look, here's what I want you to do. Okay. I want to go I, ahead I do and just... do an 82. Let's do that. Then I want you to jog just over here and back across the grass. Then do your fast one. Okay, those numbers that I gave you. Okay. So instead of doing the float, we're just going to do uh, a recovery, right? So, do you want so fast, to jog at 200? Fast. Yeah, jog about 200. Just jog as much as you know, 200 meters to recover. Well, it's, okay. Yeah, it's a but start and finish yeah. here so I can get your times. Okay. So, you, you know, jog around and come back in like this. Across, okay. Across yeah. the grass. So I'll hit the 50 and then we'll It's about 90 so second the, recovery. These are 400, so. About 90 not second recovery. Two miles of, it's not two miles of my rounds. So, so 82, recover. 74. Then the fast one, recover. Yeah. 74 is going to feel pretty easy, so. Uh, I'll help you regulate those. Okay. okay. We'll get to the mile first. Okay. <laughs> Good. 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 Perfect. We are so grateful and lucky to have two sponsors with us um, supporting our journey in this video series. One is Soar, a running apparel brand out of the UK. They make super high tech, super comfortable, super lightweight clothing for running. Um, I feel confident fast when I wear it. So check them out. Um, there will be a discount link somewhere. So be looking for that. Um, and then the other sponsor is Honey Stinger. Honey Stinger has provided me with fuel to prepare me for workouts and races, to sustain my energy during workouts and races, and then to recover after. So they're awesome. Um, check both of them out. So I started my marathon cycle at about 14 weeks out. We're now at about seven weeks out and I'm recapping this last week. So eight weeks out. Um, I've already done 
five long runs with quality in them, mm, 20 plus mile runs with quality. Um, heading into this week, um, I'm averaging 115 miles a week, except for on race weeks where I run 85 to 90 miles. Um, heading into week eight, um, I raced this weekend 10K National Championships, so I knew I wasn't going to be able to get a hard long run in. So last Saturday, we did a 24-mile long run where I did um, six We're miles easy, five run. miles. I, I averaged, I, right now. I think, 525, yeah. uh, another six miles easy, and then five miles where I average about 518 to 519. Uh, and then I did a cool down. Um, that's probably the best. I've done this workout every cycle, and that's definitely the best average that I've had. So feeling very confident because I think those long runs with quality are the indicators of where your fitness is, especially because they're as marathon specific as you can get. Um, so uh, heading into race week, I ran 85 miles. I only doubled on Monday, which is unusual for me, but um, I'm actually okay pulling back my mileage. Uh, I like to run fast and I know it really helps. I know it helps sustain the future weeks where I'll bring it up again this week to 115 miles. Um, so we'll be showing you a little video of my pre-race workout on Tuesday. We took this opportunity to do some speed work, so we did bookends, <laughs> two mile bookends, um, both around marathon pace, and then in between we ended up doing eight 400s. We were supposed to do 10, but we were a little fast, so um, Rick pulled it at eight. Um, we just did some strides. We like to do strides in the middle of some, oh, talking to the camera, sorry. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I know. Continue, please, get closer. Yeah, I, um, <laughs> um, just getting some speed. Um, it actually makes those four nose feel smoother um, after you do a couple hundred meter strides. So we like to incorporate those in between intervals sometimes. Um, we alternated a fast 400, um, which got down to 64, with a cruise 400, which were around, usually around 74, 75 seconds. Um, and then the rest of the week, I just chilled, traveled out to Long Island, um, and then race day, um, you know, I was coming in, I, I'm, I'm confident right now because I know I'm, I know I feel good. I know I'm running well. Um, I thought I could win. I was second. Um, I ran 31.56, which is close to my PR on a very tough course. It's you're either going straight uphill or straight downhill on that 10K at Cow Harbor, um, which is now the 10K Road National Championship. That didn't feel faster. What? Yeah. You seem like you're. Going slower. Yeah. It's like, oh, we're around yeah. 70. It's like, oh, she's yeah. running 72. Yeah. I was like, oh. Then I saw 33 and I was like, oh. Big drop. I couldn't look. <laughs> That's not <okay. laughs> I could tell. Because you didn't slow down yeah. after the 200. No adjustment. I was just like, <laughs> just going to commit. Yeah. Let's see it. That's good. You should go there. Come on, Susan. There, go. Be there. Uh, yeah. So we hit a 68. Oh yeah, just talking to the camera. Uh, <laughs> 68 again. Uh, felt slower, probably because of the strides. Taking a long recovery today, just because we're not worried about it. We're just worried about like feeling that fast and smooth pace. Um, so we'll probably hit another uh, 75 this next one. Cruise it. 
amazing race, really fun course. Um, I think it will prepare me well for Boston because it is very hilly. Um, and just coming in mentally, you kind of have to um, segment those those hills and downhills and be okay with them. So excited about that. Um, I'll share a little bit. I, I do think I was a little bit of a disadvantage. I'm the week before my period, which I know that I am at the worst hormonal place in my cycle, um, which is okay because now I know I can still run really well. Um, does that, if, uh, if you're a female, you know that that really affects you, um, especially mentally, it makes you really nervous. Um, but I was really happy with that race. Steph definitely deserved to win. She uh, ran really strong. She ran really good tactics and she led the whole thing. Um, so I am very happy for her. Typically, um, let's say race week, if it's a half marathon or a marathon, my workout is usually uh, three by 1600 slash 200, where we start the 1600 at around um, race pace, which you know usually is very doable, very smooth. Um, and then the 200s are just fast but smooth, sharpening up, making those race pace um, intervals feel um, like a job. And, uh, but if, like, for example, this week we had a shorter race, so we did some more speed focused stuff. 64. Oh. Yeah. 64. That was good. We progressed our, we basically stayed at 75 for our cruises, and then 69, 68, 65. 64. Yeah, I was 65, 65. Good. I yeah, saw 66 good. on the schedule and was like, <laughs> if I run 69. <laughs> yeah. So now we'll take a good recovery, run another 530, which after the speed we'll feel like we're jogging. Um, so we'll probably go a little faster if I have anything to do about it. But, uh, but yeah, that's it. So, 510 last mile, which felt really smooth after the fast 400. So, yeah, feeling good about the speed. Um, you kind of have to have it going in to any race. Um, at this level, even the marathon, you're needing like that five flat speed to feel really smooth and really easy. So, I'm hoping that in the 10K, like inevitably the leaders will go out. Well, this one's downhill, so I think about like well below five. Um, so hopefully I can manage that and uh, recover while I'm racing. All right guys, thanks for watching the first episode. Um, again, this is kind of a like pre-race track session. Um, really good to know like how to approach race week when it's not your A race, so um, we'll be talking about that a little bit more. Alright.